Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy branch hand co-host Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking about the South Dakota States tournament that was this weekend and a little bit of news. This is episode 473. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like hundred instant deadpan humor. Over how they, six uh, how people learn? think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. They're gonna be able to edit that out. Sure. That's cool because of I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sale products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-L-5, 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you're buying from the shop.wizkids.com website, you can go ahead and use code DIALH10 for 10% off your order there. Not usable with Iconics and Play at Home Kits. Joining me in the studio is Simeon Bruce. Simeon, what's going on? Yo, I'm here. And we have ooh ah special guest slash uh, regular really uh, Ian Eggleston <laughs> in the studio. Yeah, I'm I'm special but regular. Special, especially <laughs> regular. We, there we, can we say. go. Well, that's I'll take it. Yeah, I don't know if that's really a compliment, <laughs> but no, here we are. Uh, we like to start every week off with what made us happy this week. What we'll Ian starts and sees the guest. Yeah, um, not something that I guess really made me happy, but uh, I had a flat tire. That was cool. Why are you going with that? Because uh, Simeon, what made me happy is I have friends that can come and help oh. me change it. And it was uh, it was quite the process. Simeon had to, like, get under my car, which was, like, a little dangerous. We had, like, a little prop under it. And Simeon kicked the, like, Roll. wheel off of the car, actually, to, like, because the thing just wouldn't pry off. Yeah. And so I got my tire changed. And then I had another friend, Calder, who had a truck who could get my tires from Sioux Falls because I had a different set on. So now I need to put this new set on, you know, whatever. But, uh, yeah, I was able to, like, fix my car because I have good friends. And, like, you know, not everybody can say that. So that that part made me wow. happy. But Wholesome. I wanted to talk about this because it was just so strange. Like, I was driving home from work. I had my windows down because it was just so hot in Omaha. And I just hear, like, a, like, super slow. I'm like, what the heck? And then Simeon even saw it himself. There's just, like, this. It literally looks like somebody just stabbed my tire next really? to the rim. It looks like something mm. from the inside of the tire, like, flew out of it. So I send a picture to, like, my dad, too. I'm like, what do you think happened here? He's like, I honestly have no clue. The only thing I can think of is I ran over some, like, debris, and it catapulted, like, a literal knife into my tire. Because <laughs> it's a rip on the side. It makes no sense. So I've just been, like, scratching my side, head over yeah. that. And, like, I had another, like, legitimate flat tire. Like, I hit a nail. Like, oh. literally less than a year ago. Dealing with this, I was just like, you have to be kidding me. And it's like, what could I have done to prevent this? So, not necessarily what made me happy. But getting it fixed did make me happy. It's a mm. lot off the mind, you know, getting the spare on. And then, you know, I'll go get them a new set put on. So, right on. I like a little that, different this that's week. Pretty, but, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's wholesome. unique. Yeah, wholesome. Uh, yeah. I, I do wish I had remembered to remove the lug nuts before I kicked the tire off, but oh my gosh, took me a while. Oh. <laughs> it just like when it finally popped, I was like, "Oh no!" It's completely threaded. <laughs> just, yeah, that's how strong I am. You're so no, yeah. No. It's this both smoothed I out. Was, that was like the shockwave knocked me on my butt. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> if that tire hadn't already been flat, it would have. Uh, yeah, it would have yeah, exploded. Would have popped uh, it. Simeon, what made me do happy this week, my man? What made me happy this week was uh, one of my younger cousins, uh, by younger I mean almost a decade younger than me, oh. got married this weekend. So, uh, so that's what, he's like 60? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Uh, yeah, that, that math tracks. No, so while uh, these two will be talking about some state stuff, I was busy... Doing like the dance in the night away. That little little chicken dance. Got a big pole. Got to have. Got to have the chicken dance at the wedding. Two of the smallest towns in Nebraska. Like they're like we're gonna have the wedding in Wood River and like oh cool town of fourteen hundred. Beautiful. And they're like but the receptions in Cairo and I was like ah yeah town of like seven (laughs) hundred. And my sister's like, do you know where you're going? I'm like, it has five streets. Yeah. I, I won't get lost. I'll, yeah, I'll it's, figure it out. And if I do, like, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> right. I was like, I could park literally any point in that town, and it'd be a four-minute walk. At oh, most. my gosh. Uh, nice. But, yeah, the, 
the fact that uh, two people are happy, that's great. I like that. That's nice. Um, that is nice. Yeah, I'm a big proponent for marriage. That's awesome. Glad some people choose to do that. Uh, <laughs> <anyhow>. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> no, it was it was a lovely service. It was uh, really cool seeing family and friends and uh, mostly family. I actually had no friends at all there. Ah. Because you know, why would I? Very, yeah, I would say. Usually it's, yeah, just family. <laughs> yeah, just family. But... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that was really nice. I guess to to kind of borrow off of Ian's almost not happy moment of the week, I will say uh, I lost a coworker this week to a fireworks accident. Yeah, and by lost, I mean he's still alive um, for now, uh, but he will no longer be able to work due to fireworks. So uh, be careful with your fireworks; they're not Please. toys. It's almost like they put it on the pack. They should put it on I, the packaging. I don't know. Yeah. What's crazy about that is like you had sent over like that message. And I was like, man, I saw this on Twitter an hour ago on like the <laughs> Omaha like police scanner account. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Once again, he's still alive, but some digits were lost. <laughs> I keep saying I lost him because like he he won't be able to work there anymore. Right. So I did like quote unquote lose him as a coworker. Right. But like most people say, like I lost like this person, and like it's because of death. Yeah, he died. Yeah. No, didn't die. He's still just alive. Still there. He's quite just still alive. Not like, really in your life anymore because yeah, yeah, won't be able to climb. Yeah, I about to say real. Unless they give him some hooks. Maybe yeah. Yeah, hook him up. <laughs> we'll strap a little hook to to the wrist. Hook or up your boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez! Oh my gosh. Uh, what made me happy this week? I haven't read it yet but captain america 750 came out so big milestone captain america comic came out i was able when i was at rainbow the other day i was able to get all the variant issues for that and it looks really cool although ironically i still need to pick up the last uh captain america cold war comic that has been going on which has been one of the best captain america comics in let me check yeah like four years so (laughs) it's been really awesome yeah like since 2019 that that run was horrible and now this one has actually been really good and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it a ton and just got to buy it. Got to buy a ridiculous amount of variants. I also sorted through and went through all my Captain America comics and found out, like, just numbered them all off. So that way when I'm at places, I can buy the ones that I don't already own because you, there's a box right there. It's not that entire box isn't full of Cap comics. But yeah. There's, like, a stack, like, that big where it's like, oh, these are extras that I have that I didn't realize I already <laughs> owned these books. So that's a little more sorted, and we'll we'll be able to figure I, it out now. I tried one time to put my entire comic collection into like one of those online trackers. Oh yeah, and I gave up about fifty percent through because I have, I think I have like twelve long boxes of oh, storage, and yeah, like I got you know like some of them I know like I have from this issue to like yeah the most that's that's why I, I just put like you know three hundred thirty four yeah. to like three eighty six or something you know like if it's a that's, complete. So, like, at one point, I was trying to collect every, like, title that Wolverine had participated in, been, like, guest star, like, whatever, anything he, like, a lot. And then it hit, I think it was around 20, it was right around, like, the death of Wolverine, so I'm going to say 2012, 2013, when that storyline kicked off. At that point, I was collecting, like, five issues a week that were just for Wolverine purposes. Wow. And that's a week, so, like, you know, I don't know how many comics that comes out to, but... Like mm. in a month, you know. Uh, well, I know how for many, like four uh, to a five dollars a comic. You yeah, know, some, that much a week. Some issues are like bi monthly. Some are you right, know, just one a month. But it was an insane amount, and then I gave up, and it like kind of uh, did like a reverse. Like I bounced the opposite direction, like the pendulum swing the other way, and I was like, I'm never collecting again. Oh so no! I went strictly <laughs> like trade paperback for a long time. Oh wow! And now I've started buying floppies occasionally again, but. I remember trying to do like a similar online catalog of like all my golden and silver age hero click oh, stuff. Oh wow. And I just have bins and bins of stuff, you know, from like literally decades of playing. The olden days. And even just sorting the physical stuff was just so rough. And then I was like, oh, I better catalog this on like HC Realms. And then I got like maybe 10% of the way through. I was like, no. Mm-mm. That's got to be the best way to do it, right? Just HC Realms yeah. could have, have. It would be wants, nice, whatever. but it's just like. Oh man, the amount of time that would take to just like, even just like clicking through all that. I mm, no thank you. I did that when I first started playing. Like I oh I, I so did like, I oh, yeah. I've got, I've got twelve thin mans like sweet <laughs> like love this. But then the worst thing is like you start getting like random like DMs from people that are like oh, hey yeah. I noticed you have this thing in your collection. Oh and I, was like, I have no idea where that's at. 
to, okay, we're going back. That actually happened to me this week. I had made, like, a trade thread, like, a month ago when Avengers 60th came out. And uh, randomly, like, three or four days ago, this guy messaged me. All right, the trade thread was looking for, like, Ghost Goblin and a few other Avengers 60th okay. pieces. This guy just randomly messaged me, messages me on HC Realms. He's like, hey, I have a Ghost Goblin. I'd sell it for $110. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, absolutely. So I just bought another Ghost Goblin. Oh, my gosh. And that was just a random DM from, like, having a trade thread up. So I don't know who's scouring the trade threads or the buy threads on to. HC Realms. Y- yeah. And then just looking for people to message. Yeah, I know, but this is, like, a month ago. Like, this guy probably yeah. clicked through the page. It is really weird, yeah. It's like... It's weird, but shout out to that guy. Thank Dude. you so much. <laughs> Some of those old trade threads you like forget to delete off like Facebook yeah. or HC Realms, and they like message you a few June months later. You're 5th, like, I don't. 2018. I don't own this. Do you man. still have this figure that got a legacy card? Well, right now, <laughs> <laughs> it can be worse than that because I'm I'm guilty of this too. But if you go on HC Realms, you can click. Uh, there's like the have, keep, want. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't remember which one you click, but it'll show the ones. That like everyone on the website has as like a have, which means they're like willing to trade right, willing it. to trade it. Yeah. If you put it on like keep, then it's not. It doesn't show That's up your as collection. Like a trade. Yeah. But you like I did that for old figures that like I just had a hard time finding anywhere, and then I would just send like seven messages out to people. Do you still have this? Are Worth you interested it. in trading it? Blah blah blah. And this was years. It's not ago. a bad strategy. No, like you, I cast a wide net with that, and I usually got <laughs> stuff. Um, also worked to like get rid of like if I had multiples of something I really didn't want. Yeah. I would just be like, who wants this? Nice. I'm not I'm not hating when I make the statement of saying who does this, but I'm just personally saying like you know, it's a it's a bit wild to be digging yeah. through HC realms. Like it's a you know it's tumbleweeds over there. It it's is. a ghost town. <laughs> it it's is. not your grandkids website, that's Ooh. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but all right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into... We're going to do a little bit of news first before we get into the tournament talk. I think we only had one sculpt shown this week. Well, we got a preview. First, it was something is coming. I forget what their caption was, but it was this video of like a gravestone. And then quickly followed, it was the Black Lantern. Did you guys watch that little video? That was yeah. The, yeah, with the Black Lantern symbol. Which we were like, oh, what's going to be? What's going to be? And then we get to see Black Lantern Batman, who looks really, really cool. Very similar sculpt, I think, to like M10, where he's kind of oh, lurching man. forward. He's got his cape. It's kind of up. Honestly, the the DC 10th one might be a better sculpt because he's coming out of like the, the grave for yeah. Bruce Wayne, which, you okay, know, that that's sick. like a, a really cool moment in Blackest Night. Like, yeah, it's like oh my gosh, he's back, you know. Uh, but honestly, like just to have Black Lantern Batman back in the game, I don't even care what he does. Absolutely beautiful to mm. go with uh, the Martian Manhunter we saw. Who Ian doesn't care what a figure oh. does. Shall we remind <laughs> Ian last time the city? I don't care what this figure does. I can't. Okay, wait. Ultron Infinity. <laughs> Ultron Infinity was a very special case. Like, come on, man, that was. I don't care what they do to an extent, but when you just make them, like, over-costed, worst mission point figure ever, then no offense. If you like Ultron Infinity, more power to you, but come on. Just like uh, Giant Size gives you, like, willpower and, like, this and that and blah, 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 like that symbol, we need, like, a de facto rule that says if a figure is over 100 points, they get, like, certain protections. Because, yeah, Yeah. there's uh, too many times, like, an Ultron Infinity where he can't reduce penetrating damage. I don't even. Is he, I think he is. I think he outward. is power cosmic. He's power yeah. cosmic. Yeah. So like he at least has that. But like man, he's just got. He's like, just impervious. Get an exploit. Like, Pensai. If, if a character's over two hundred points, like their combat values can't be negatively modified or something. Like do something. You need something because. Yeah, he was. When just, you print this many like thirty to fifty point characters that are just murder machines. Yeah, Ultron Infinity needs some more legs to stand on other than, yeah, I'm not going to do damage. I'm actually going to roll a die for maybe three mission points. You know it would be real cool? That's tough. If Batman you, better not be that, you know? What do you want Batman to be? So we've already seen the deceased, how they're going to do, like, the just normal zombies. Yeah. What do you yeah. think the Black Lanterns? Are they going to have the same oh, die ability or something? Or? I wonder, you know, there's so many directions they could go with it. I mean, there's a lot of people speculating on Facebook that we're going to get, like, you know, black uh, rings and constructs. But I think we've all kind of talked, like, does that even really make sense? Like, Black Lanterns don't really do constructs. Not, no. No. WizKids does. They do, yeah. 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 (laughs) WizKids does. So there's that. A ring would make sense, and it'd be cool. Like Um, some steel energy with closer range attacks. Just like like the symbiote, just like the Green Lantern ring. 
Yeah. I, I would, would almost like a shared trade or something rather than a ring to equip because then I could play like the Black Lanterns as a team as opposed to oh, yeah. playing them as a team with Versus one. Versus only one guy ring. can have the ring. That's yeah. true. That It'd is a bummer cool about to the see, like, Maybe like, uh, you know how the Secret Six trait worked? How if you had like three plus of them, you got a bonus of oh, six yeah. plus? Maybe if you got a bonus for the more Black Lanterns you played, something like that, like an army. Or if they go the War of Light route and there's the, some Black Lantern generics and maybe they can like make those. I think that could be pretty sick, I mean, with too. all the goons we're getting, do we get a Black Lantern goon? Ooh. I hope so, man. <laughs> you know? Reanimated goon? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, uh, yes. But yes. he's just the same goon sculpt he's like that? He's the only Black Lantern that's Just a, a ring. Literally yeah. no different all he has ring. the ring. <laughs> he's, a, he's the only one that's a chase, and he's a generic, so you need, oh like, Oh, my five. gosh. Ugh. Uh, no, I actually... Flashback to Zombie Scroll. Zombie Scroll, dude. The chase generic. Oh, my gosh. We need more chase generics. I think there's a really? lot of routes they could we go really, with it, we though. Need more. And I think... I don't know. I think no matter what they do with them, I think they'll be pretty flavorful. I, they should be. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I thought the deceased dials were really, really cool. It's interesting. Or the yeah. dial. The di- yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. interesting. Uh, the idea that he's kind of like regular Superman. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, zombie blow up Sun Man now. is kind of <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, with insane stats. Yeah, too. dude. The, like, I mean, I get that he's like slowly dying. He takes an yeah. like, unavoidable each turn. He takes yeah. a max one damage. So you have like only three turns them. So you're like, oh, I just want to get to the last click and pulse wave. Oh, please. You know, so it'll be interesting <laughs> to see how each DC character is designed. So he, that Superman specifically does not have like a reduced on that click so right. you could get him to that pulse wave power like on your turn and pool then, of lava yeah pool of lava or like frogman elevated off of, yeah <laughs> there's a lot of ways to do it but like you could get him to the i mean first your opponent has to ko him so they have the chance to kill him twice in the same turn but uh yeah there's a chance that you could just like auto succeed and he's got like a 13 for four with pulse yeah wave, eight it's, it's nasty brutal. does printed damage I'm, I'm curious to see what they do with the rest of them if they all have the plus 15 points at the two same more time clicks, with that, that superman that like, brown ability that he has yeah with uh whatever yeah so if you say uh, impervious is a bronze power uh, uh, uh <laughs> here we brown. say it's brown it's brown, brown. yeah the, like his his lower half of the dial is so weak. Like when it I was really looking is. at that so dial, I'm like, oh, and just if I played against him, I'd just go like punch him once and say like, yeah, okay, that's sixty point yeah. piece. That's you're like, I'm probably, I'm bad. not gonna beat this character. I'm not gonna try and activate him and kill him, but I might take out like hit him once and then take out the rest of the team. And then if I have like four attacks in a turn, yeah, yeah just burn go. through then, him. Yeah. yeah, maybe some poison could help you because I, I think he's. Is he only super senses on Only the, super yeah. senses. Yeah. So, yeah, literally any knockback, poison, grab yeah. an object under him he or whatever terrain. Anything, but he does take a max one. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's still uh, very cool, but Exodus, it is. Yeah. Exodus just uh, oh, geez. KOs him Melts in one <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I don't know if it That's says really cool. attacks. It might just say it takes one damage. One damage from sources or whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the wording is. Yeah. I did have a premonition the other night Ooh. about the Black Lanterns, though. Uh, they all have the chainsaw wonder woman trait oh gosh oh where, god like, where once no. Per, no once per game <laughs> when a friendly character would be ko'd you just say no oh. so it's, it's gonna be a full team of that that would be so and there's gonna be a 20 point generic that's a chase <laughs> and he's got really good stats <laughs> you've, got, you've got some interesting premonitions <laughs> it's a dream also when i went outside my sunflowers were gone and i was like how did they get removed from the yard <laughs> This is a very strange dream. See me, a tinfoil line under that hat, mm. some some of that, that mirror lining yeah. from Paul Watchman <laughs> under your ball cap there. Oh, jeez. I plucked the flowers from my yard, and at the bottom of the stem was the Black Lantern Chases. <laughs> there was a secret window and a garden out there? I was Johnny Depp? I don't know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, well... That's really it for news this week. It's pretty fun. But we're going to go ahead and talk about the South Dakota State Tournament. And what better way to start than at the beginning. So we're filling out our build sheets. And all of a sudden, that's right, George A. Romero walks in and he says, Do you know about the deceased and how zombies are? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so what did you end up playing, Ian, for states? Let's go through our teams really quick. Yeah, okay. So um, I had another local, well, previous local because i live in nebraska now south dakota boy at heart still that's right i know calder feels that That's exactly right but we had been talking about a way to uh, basically utilize 
shock gauntlets with Scarab. So he can copy them and just do the Force Blast. But if you already have Force Blast, you can triple knockback. And so the thinking was is that Scarab can only do one damage. But the knockback you can also do. So if you knock somebody back with Scarab, you can deal the one damage and then deal an additional one with the knockback. So Shock Gauntlet's effects allows you to knock back three people if you already have Force Blast. So we were trying to figure out a way to give Scarab Force Blast so he could copy the Shock Gauntlet's and then do a triple knockback twice in tandem with the Chase Commissioner from Wonder Woman 80th as well. And so we went back and forth just trying to figure out a way to do that. Ultimately, it just didn't really work. And in the process, we built a really nasty Scarab team. And so I was practicing against him with that. And ultimately, I just decided to play the same build because we had worked on it for, you know, probably a couple weeks at that point. And it ended up being a lot of fun. So on the build, it was Scarab. He started unequipped. It was Commissioner, also unequipped. Sakari and Iron Man with the cloak. World's Finest with the Utility Belt, uh, Chip, who started with the Green Ring, Mad Jim Jasper is with the Shot Gauntlets equipped, and, to do oh yeah, of course, the fav- my favorite piece on the team, uh, the Avengers 60th Super Rare Spider-Man at 25. And so, what this allowed you to do is that Scarab could copy any team ability while he was adjacent to Spider-Man, and the team abilities on your team were Batman, Spider-Man, PD, Superman, so you could see through stealth, get stealth, get a bonus to your super senses. Oh, Green Lantern too, so anybody can carry eight. And then the idea was that you could throw down enough barrier to where it's like, you can't get to me, turn one. You use a stop sign to shut off their improved movement through the barrier, and then uh, you put Sakarian Iron Man up front, so it's like, if you want to come attack me, you can go attack a 21 defense with World's Finest, because he's in stealth. Or you can go attack a 20 defense with Sakari and Iron Man behind all this barrier. And World's Finest also behind barrier. And then the rest of my team is behind even more barrier. (laughs) So it made for some really challenging situations for my opponent to be in. And yeah, that is pretty much the gist of the team. But it also had some equipment on there, so I should go over that quickly. Alchemical Fire, Radioactive Clay, uh, Emotional Modifier, Dark Hold, Time Platform. So Scarab had all these tricks up his sleeve. And basically the whole theory was just like, you have to come and fight me. You know, it's very standard strategy for the Scarab. But overall, um, it was pretty fun to play. I'm not going to lie. Scarab is very dirty. I definitely feel like I got some karma in the day for playing him. But sorry, I think I've gone on a bit about my team. Calder, That's right. what did you play? I played a very similar team to my Nebraska State's team slash the ROC Silver team that we also had built and played. So... The night before, I was really thinking, like, I might just play Avengers Prime. I am so tired of 300 modern hero clicks and, like, practicing all these nights and doing all this online play. And I'm just like, oh, I'm so burnt. I might just play something terrible. And I'm like, no, I should try, I guess. So the main change to the team we made is I made a 50-point change. That was really it. Um, So the team is Iron Spider. It's Flash, Super Rare at the Double Charge. It is the Empire Legacy Captain America. My boy, love him, puts in that work. Saint Walker, Star Sapphire, Chip. And then we had, I want to say, yeah, we had Tempo. We had the Emo Mod on, what's his face? Iron Spider. And then we had the Cloak on, oh yeah, this edition, Sakarian Iron Man. So he wasn't originally on the team beforehand. We actually had another Green Lantern for KCGL, and we had the 30-point Molecule Man for 50 points. And then I had Cloak on Flash instead. So adding Sackman just helped a ton. He was he was huge. He I really needed it. It made my team a less alpha strikey team and less like, oh, I get rid of all your barrier or I can be more defensive. And it just gave my team overall more like staying power for just how much longer Sackman can live and the problems that he can cause in, in and of himself. Uh, we still did Pool of Lava and we still did the 3x3 three three elevated terrain as well. Uh, but that was basically the gist of the team. It was a ton of fun. Obviously, we had the lanterns that drop. We can get the 12 attack out with the flash and everything. Um, my biggest thing was I really wanted to... I kind of told this to myself. I, I, I'm going to change my team. and I think it's missing some stuff. But then I would practice it. I'm like, no, I think it's fine. I think I need to play better. And like that was just my mindset going into the day is that I should play better. Um, and I still... I think ultimately, especially in my game that we'll get to later, I think I played bad in like one of them for sure. Yeah, uh, feel you there. Yeah, you know, it's just... <laughs> 
But uh, this really cool tactic, and I'll, I'll get into a lot of stuff later, but I really started to think about what all I had on my team, when, what all I could do. But that's what I played. It was just a very simple, you know, copy Green Lantern, run up in your face. I have Battle Fury. You can't use Super Senses. I have some dude that does just a ton of damage. I can get lucky with Chainsaws. You know, I've got two Outwits still. You know, it's just a very solid team. I can shut off your equipment if I get lucky. But that was my team. We don't have to get into every single game, but we can talk a little <laughs> bit about the first game. We got to gotta talk a little bit, but I do uh, want to just comment on Calder's build. It's kind of been cool to see how it's, like, evolved over time. And, like, you know, this has been a build we've both worked on, like, pretty heavily. And uh, realizing that, like, oh, wait, so Sicarian Iron Man doesn't have to move out by himself. Like, you can move him up, drop him off with the first charge, and then have yeah. him act as kind of this pseudo retaliator because the rest of my team is just going to move up with the second charge with flash be in your face so carrying iron man's about halfway through the map next turn he's going to pick you know charge flurry or hypersonic whatever and he's going to come bash you yeah. now too and it's like you kind of want to deal with him but you have to deal with the rest of my team first so I really like that. But, yeah, we have to talk about round one because Calder and I played against each other. Instantly played against each other. I was happy with it. I was actually like, okay. Because the last Nebraska State's tournament, I think my team got really hindered by the fact that I had an easy round one. Sorry, Kyle. Uh, and then was in, the, like, the winner's bracket for the rest of it. And I just think I had tougher games because of that. And then, not going to lie, I was like, I wouldn't mind if I would have some easier games. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, okay, Ian round one. Potentially, more than likely, a round one loss. I'm not super stoked to play against Scarab. I mean, my team was designed pretty much exactly to beat like Calder's style of team. Yeah, and the Alpha Strike stuff. There's, it, I can't really place my guys super well. Yeah, um, I took tough. map right off the bat. Yep. That hurt. And then Calder went in with a big Alpha on my world's finest. Dice did not go his way in the slightest. And after that, I hit an alchemical fire roll that gave me like AoE damage on Calder's team. Yeah. And after that, it was a few pings. My Sicarian came in, and you know Calder was fighting uphill from there. Like it was tough. It was really tough. I will say I scored more points than I thought I was going. It was weird. Yeah. Like in the beginning, I was like, "Oh, okay, I have a chance to like one shot world's finest here if I can get lucky." You know, and uh, you have to take that. That's and, yeah. that's what my team says: is that's, you can go for this, or you can try to burn sack. Man. That's what I wanted to go for, and I will say this is the the day I dropped the fire hydrant the most because it's an autonomous six range, ten for two, and I I dropped it both against you and Tristan, which we'll get to later to like try to kill like carnage <laughs> right away. I thought that was really fun, but yeah, that game just didn't go my way. There was a chance where it's like, okay, I could have maybe gotten really lucky, hit him, and then he'd also have to miss his fifty fifty roll to only take one. Which is like yeah. a big risk still, but um, I mean, but you have a big attack value. To go for it. Yeah, you oh, have yeah. to take it because, like, if you waste your whole turn burning my sack, man, you're playing into exactly what I want you to do. Yeah, and if you go for world's finest and get the big hit. I'm I'm at a massive disadvantage now. Like it's going to be hard for me to come back. So I think you played it correctly, but you know the team it's is just dice. designed to game. have like odds oh, stacked yeah. in my favor, Absolutely. and that's you know so I have to take that risk as well. But it's a good risk for me to take. So you know, right? I think uh, honestly, I don't need to talk about the rest of my games really. Like Scarab performed exactly how you think he would. Barrier is still incredibly hard to deal with with the stop sign, like my least favorite element in modern. I think it's very dumb that you can have it on pretty much every build. Yeah. And just shutting off improved movement, throwing down so much free barrier, so much costed barrier, and then just hiding in a corner. I wanted to play Scarab once before he retired, like, for good. So that's my justification. So round two, similar story. Just I think he scored 25 points. Round three, I played against Luke. He killed my Sicarian Iron Man. And then round four, I played against the guy who would inevitably win. And I say inevitably because his team was just absurd. Nasty. He was good, yeah. Um, he, I played against him, and every tarot he flipped was just, like, perfect for the turn. It's like, you have to be kidding me. I needed a five with a prob on it. I miss it, of course. It's just like, okay. Uh, I miss my mind control attack, which was like a six or a seven. Also, It was a six, also with a prob on it. And then, yeah, the tarot goes his way. Like, he comes that, like, across. Is the tower in effect? Or? No, he had, like, the first turn he flips uh, plus one to uh, single D6 rolls. So, mm. And he picked map, which he rolled a four for map roll. I roll a three. My team really likes to pick map, mm. too. So that hurt. Um, yeah, flips that card. So I'm going first. So immediately right off the bat, you know, he has, like, Spider Prime. He's got Mephisto. He's got a bunch of rollouts on his team. And... Uh, 
Uh, he's got the plus one to all that. And then next card he flips, plus one to Super Senses. So it's literally the same thing. Ugh. Turn after that, Psychic Blast, deal one to everybody adjacent. So his rookie bystander just comes in and, like, mercs my whole team. And this is after, like, I'm just completely unable to touch him because of these tarot cards. Because I can't roll at all, like... It was just absolutely brutal. I got skunked. I decided to accept it as karma for playing Scarab. <laughs> Fair and enough. And then uh, the only comment I have for my top cut match was uh, my chip died like two turns previous. I left my stop sign out. My opponent and I both didn't say anything because, you know, we'd been playing for, what, five, six hours at this point. Yeah. I placed my barrier. And then during his turn, I'm like, oh, this stop sign is supposed to be dead. And without that stop sign there, he was able to just bring his whole team in and just merc me. So I literally lost because I forgot to put, take a stop sign off the mm. map, and I ended up finishing sixth on the day. So that's pretty much like my entire tournament wrap up. I will never play Scarab again. Um, Do you think he needs an like? It's been talked about online quite a bit. Do you think he needs changed? Honestly, like when I could just time platform somebody back to their starting area, like at a whim or on a whim, whatever the saying is, um, that is really stupid. I don't know if Scarab is like necessarily so broken that he needs to be errated, but I will say, like, playing him and playing against him is just, I mean, ultimately, it's not enjoyable because it's like I'm going to interact with you taking no risk just because you decided to play the game, which is equipping characters. Right. Like, Every team does that. And so just immediately having an advantage. And, you know, it's a state tournament, so I don't feel, like, bad for playing it, right? Right, yeah. I want to play to win. Yeah. I think that's a fair stance Absolutely. to take. But at the same time, with that said, I still did not feel good about playing it. Sure. You know, like... I never felt good about playing Vulture, even though at the time I was like... It does, like, Vulture especially felt really bad because uh, you would just table somebody... Oh, like game your, is over. Your second turn. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be your second turn and like you would their whole team would be gone. Maybe they'd have like a few figures left, but like it didn't matter. It was over pretty much as soon as like you went first if they couldn't beat you to the punch, so to speak. And yeah, it never felt good playing Vulture, but at the same time it was like I don't see how I don't play this figure. Yep. Because if I don't play it and I play against one, like I don't yeah. have a way to respond if to If I it. don't play it, someone else will. <laughs> I mean, I mean yeah. but yeah. Scarab is kind of like the reverse of that because like Vulture is also very like an uninteractive figure, but he, yeah, like you're saying, he tables people. Scarab is like, I have to, for I force you to play a worse game. I force you to play a game you don't want to play. I basically turn the game into a mini game. I think it's kind of comparable to playing against Galactus in Marvel Snap. Oh, okay. In okay. You have to play around Galactus. You have to play you around do, my yeah. Scarab. You absolutely have to. Otherwise, I'm just going to take this. And that's how every game felt. And, uh, you know, sans a few, like, my own mistakes, I'm sure I could have done better. You know, obviously, more practice always helps. But my personal opinion is there are ways around Scarab. You can always play uh, the X of Swords Deadpool, who makes the water. You can right. always play Prime Bishop. But the thing is, is like if I have to play a specific figure to counter a figure just because I don't like it, I don't necessarily love that. So there are ways to beat Scarab. I don't think Scarab is like so overpowered, but man, is he just awful. He is just not fun. He is not good for the game in the sense where I don't think it's enjoyable for either party. Sure. That's my overall Dang. stance. Yeah. All right. Wow. Still had a good time, though. <laughs> and let's hear uh, Jaime Reyes. What do you have to say about that? Hey, man, Scarab's great. <laughs> we don't, sorry, we don't, we don't have yeah, get out of the guest, studio. Jaime Reyes. Right, get out of here. Interview George Lopez, his his father, grand Scarab's his father? uncle, his uncle, his oh, uncle. Okay. Please, please don't <laughs> get his me familia. Correct That's here. my uncle's name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Calder, let's go into your day a bit sure. because mine is a little more, you know, yeah. Facebook ranty. Uh, the rest of my games were a little, little up and down. So I ended up going 2-2 for the day. So my second game was up against Jonah. By the way, I like I said earlier, going into this tournament, I was like, I would like to play some easy games, you know? We have some people that don't play that frequently in Sioux Falls that show up to these tournaments. And I'm like, you know, I wouldn't mind playing against <laughs> some people that are not the greatest players in the universe. I don't know, playing some jank versus playing like the most meta stuff all the time. Uh, that didn't happen <laughs> at all. That did not happen at all today. Even being in the loser's bracket, I ended up having to play against just super meta teams the entire time, which is, I mean, I don't know, I guess good probably for practice and trying to be a better player and all Very that. Very quickly, another interesting note on the day, we had 19 players? It's 18 players. 18 players. 
Not a single Carnage Silver Surfer that, was yeah, playing. Yeah, that is wild. And there are people who own them in our area, but yeah. everybody just decided to not play Carnage Surfer. So I guess the Necro Sword really had its like scare. There was, I mean, there was a lot of uh, Spider Man with the Necro Sword and stuff like that happening. Yeah. So it's just like mm, it makes sense. I ain't playing. I ain't playing Silver Surfer. But die. at the same time, it's just not a single it one. Is, uh, it is that thing about like the local meta and what you're used to seeing and playing against. Like has that effect for these other big tournaments yeah. where it's like the, ah, I can't risk playing Carnage Silver probably... Surfer. Probably four or five in Nebraska, and there's a lot of overlap in Nebraska and South Dakota. A bit, yeah. So yeah, I just thought it was personally very interesting. It was. Not a single one. Yeah. And he's you know the big bad. There were more. There were more Empire <laughs> Legacy Captain Americas being played that day <laughs> than than Card Server. Uh, so my next game was up against Jonah, who's a really good player. I've had to face him against like finals, top eights, multiple times in South Dakota, um, and he was playing like a Sky Tyrant build with you know some other Alpha Strikey stuff. But ultimately, he just had not enough barrier on his first turn, which is wild when it's like, oh, yeah, I've got a full layer of barrier around me, plus some smoke inside the barrier and all this other stuff. And it's like, yeah, it's, that's like nothing. That like Good basically that like doesn't exist, really. Uh, and yeah, I was able to do the thing I wanted to do. I ran up and I dropped Sackman halfway. I go with the rest of the people. And I think turn one, I killed like Sky Tyrant and Chip and then did a little bit of like damage. And then it's like all he had was... Uh, he still had world's finest. They were still there, and he still had. Some Did other you have stuff. to play against world's finest like Almost three every times? Game. Yeah, three games. Three games. Three, three games. Oof. I played against world's finest. Uh, really tough. Really, really annoying. So, but that game happened. It ended up just I got the leg up. He tried to pulse wave like twice with blue marvel, and he rolled like a three and a four each time. And he like, oh, I guess you killed my boot. Ha <laughs> ha. Sorry, Jonah. You know, it's like really sad. <laughs> like, hey. Empire Captain America took it. He has a 14 defense. So, you know, yeah, he took a damage. Uh, but, you know, after that, it was just yeah, had a lot of attacks, was able to do a lot of different stuff and was able to win that game. The next game I had to play against Tristan, which is running your, you guys running the exact same team. Yep, that's uh, the guy I collabed with. That was, that was a pretty infuriating game uh, because he did something <laughs> different than you did. He... He attacked my Flash and then placed him in a different spot in my starting area. So I had to figure out how to get without wasting a ton of actions, get Flash back over to my team or my team back over to Flash so I could actually charge and carry and move mm. up and attack and do my alpha strike. Well, you, you picked map against him, right? I did pick map. So yeah, I picked go map first. against you, so that's so, a little different. I wanted, I wanted an open area. I love Robinson Park. That's, I think, the most open map I could find anyways in Heroclix right now, but maybe no. it's not. I have no idea. But... Um, yeah, so he, he separated my chip and my flash on opposite ends of my starting area. And I was like, this really sucks to try to get across the board. Um, but we were able to do so. We went for the one big shot against uh, World's Finest, which Captain America did hit. So the thing I love about Captain America is when he replaces attack value with a 12. Between Avengers, close combat expert, and then, of course, St. Walker, he's a 15 attack for, like, five damage across the <laughs> oh, map, which man. is, like, so fun. And then he's still a 15 attack for around five to four damage his entire dial because of the replacement, because of the modifiers. That's getting to be more common. <laughs> like, yeah, there, it's not, you know, not a lot of people with, like, a high printed attack, but a 12 attack's not crazy and then close combat expert a range combat expert avengers team ability a perplex <laughs> yeah or like you know a figure that just gives you a plus one it, it's pretty at the easy same to time too now. like because probability control has been like dialed back i think quite heavily oh, yeah. like sometimes it just doesn't even matter that you have a 13 14 attack it's like you miss you roll low once it's like you might not have a prob anymore that's true i noticed a lot less prob in this tournament than like usual which is yeah yeah it's interesting and yeah so i went up tried to hit world's finest he rolled he got the only takes one damage and i was like oh well that sucks had to go for it uh and then i did the fire hydrant to try to make an autonomous shot against his carnage and that also whiffed it which is a real big bummer and then somehow on his turn uh he scored more points for me than i did on my turn before he killed his world's finest in a pulse wave and then killed his Carnage as well. And like all he crit missed with Carnage. And I was like, wow, this that was a really good turn for me. Uh he didn't kill, I think he killed like one piece on my board, some construct dropper or something. And I was like, <laughs> all right, cool. Uh and then the the game went a few different ways. He like sent my flash all the way back to the starting area, and I kind of forgot about him uh for a while. And 
I think there was just one turn where I didn't kill, if I would have, he had double token Scarab, and I had an opening for me to try to kill Scarab, and I think it was a mistake to do that. I think I should have KO'd his, because World's Finest was dead, I should have got rid of Scarab Iron Man, and then I should have cleaned up the Scarab crew. But letting his Sack Man, he barriered uh, with Mad Jim around all my pieces, and I was like, that's weird. And then he barriered Mad Jim in, and I was like, oh no, and he chose, <laughs> he, had, he had Pulse Wave Force Blast, and he Force Blast all my pieces, killed them all, like all my Contra Droppers, all the, the cheaper guys, they were just dead. Um, and I was like, all right, yeah, we should have taken care of, we should have taken care of, uh, whatever. Should have, should have killed Sack Man. Don't know why we, don't know why we did the attacks we did. And then it was just my Sakarian Iron Man and my Flash against, like, his entire team. And it was just, it wasn't going to happen. I did, was still able to score 95 points, was able to kill Spider-Man and a few other things right away. But that game wasn't great. Uh, last game uh, was my last win for the day. So I went 2-2, and I had a better record this time than Nebraska, which I was very thankful for. Um, and this game was just bullying Scarlet Witch the entire time. It was... Who did this, you did you play against Kevin? Uh, no, 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 I played against Ethan. Ethan, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Not not Maggie and Ethan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we in, in this game it was like okay, room markers for Scarlet Witch in the defensive position to where if I were to go against this team, I really wouldn't have powers and everything like that. So and this is exactly why I put Sakarian Iron Man on the team was to deal with Scarlet Witch to have a better ranged attacker uh, to have better reach on something like that. So I did it first turn. We shoot her. We get her to her stop click. Now, she doesn't die. She is actually the last piece I KO, but we just we dealt that damage to her right away. We kept the stop sign near her, buried her in a bunch, and then we were able to slowly get rid of the rest of his Masters of Evil and everything else there. He had some tough missed attacks. I chose Battle Fury with the emo mod, so he wasn't able to shoot me that much, like at all, with his like I love doing that. His Green Goblin. Yeah, with his like yeah. So cool. So Ghost Calvin couldn't shoot me. Scarlet Witch couldn't shoot me. It was like a really annoying like thing. Uh, he had to like mess with like lines of fire to where I could see this, but you know Iron Spider couldn't see you. Stuff like that was just really tough. Um, so like that was really interesting. And so once that game was over, we go into my top eight game. I'm playing against Alex Mater. I was so happy throughout the day that I was like, oh man, I haven't had to play Iron, you know, Prime Spider Man yet. My you know least favorite figure in modern. But alas, here we are. Alex Mater. I had to play him three times. Yeah. Oof, that's so rough. I can't. I can't stand him. At least you can outwit his charge from across the map. Yeah. That's really nice. His charge flurry. Uh, so right away, I think I think this team. I don't know. You guys can decide for yourselves in the video, and it's hard to know what Alex would have done differently. But my setup was just wrong. I had tempo on the outside, and I shouldn't have done that. She should have been on the inside. He shouldn't have been able to attack her. Uh, I did everything else right, though. I This was the little trick I alluded to earlier with the pool of lava. The biggest thing I noticed last time I played against the Spider-Man was he kept hitting Impervious. And I was like, dang it, I just need exploit on this team. Why is there no exploit? I'm like, ah... Captain America has it on click two. I'm like, there's no way for me to... Oh, wait, yeah, there is a way for me to activate him. Uh, so, yeah, we would just move the pool of lava to Captain America. And it's so I didn't realize you had to start five squares away with the pool of lava. Didn't play Nebraska correctly at all, apparently. Um, so in this one, I just sidestepped, moved Captain America one square outside the starting area, TK the pool of lava under him. And he was like, you can't TK water. And I was like, ah, ah, ah. There's a very specific <laughs> Facebook post that makes me never forget that you can absolutely yes, you TK can. water. Water bending. Um, yeah, dude. So yeah, we TK the pool of lava to Captain America. I end my turn. Alex is like a little confused as why I would ping my cap for one damage. And then he sees the little, little lime green and damage power there. And he's like, I understand now. Uh, and then, yeah, I... I did everything else right. I hit the leadership on Iron Spider, so we didn't have the whatever, the Necro Sword active. If you wanted to Alpha Strike my team, I had a decent barrier because of the sidestep TK and a few other things and wanting to like base his uh, rookie with Sack Man. I wasn't able to do a full barrier around my team. Not that it totally would have mattered. He would have picked up one anyways and yeah. hit me over the head with it. But uh, it just allowed his Spider Man to be able to. He wasn't able to charge Flurry, but he was able to just get all the way across the map and then just subconscious crime fight there. Yeah. Um, and then he killed Tempo, and then it came the time where my PTSD from Isaac's game, where I put everything into killing Spider-Man, and then missed everything, or, like, really, he hit every rollout, and I was like, dang. So without Tempo, he has 50 50 senses, like, period. Sure, I still have St. Walker. I could go for, like, the easier crit hits to try to make it happen with Captain America, or hope he whiffs, like, the 50 50 cents. And just if I could get one good hit with Captain America, then it's like, oh, he just has super senses. That's like a boot, 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 and it's over. Yeah, done for. You know, um, but my brain was just like, no, I can't sink it all into Spider-Man. That's the trap I fell into last time. And then I think that just psyched me out. I went for the rest of his team, uh, pulse waved, 
he had King Killmonger, and then he rolled the 50-50 on that, which really hurt. I probably shouldn't have pulled Sway if I didn't realize it wouldn't hit people that weren't adjacent to King Killmonger. I did the exact same thing. Yeah, I was like, really? And I was like, that is really stupid. Yep, really dumb. Like, yeah. why, is, why is it all targets of the attack, it's even if they trait. aren't? Yeah. Ugh, yeah, I was like, this sucks. Yeah. So I was like, wow, I would not have done that. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was like, man, it's like, okay. why would you not point that out? Well, and it's like, crazy. I get we're in a competitive environment, but it's like, hey, you know that's also not going to hit him. Because the reason I'm doing it is to guarantee, is to hit, guarantee on a hit on this thing. Right. Yep, exactly. So it's like, it I don't know. Against, uh, I don't think it was like unsportsmanlike, I don't but as an opponent, think so. I think I would point that out. Like, hey, just so you know, this is for everybody. Try to, yeah. That would, uh, the King Killmonger, uh, King Killmonger's like rollout is different than Apocalypse's because Apocalypse it hinges on... The friendlies having a specific power, right? Whereas yeah. Killmonger just hinges on the person attacking being equipped, right? And so if he's not in the pulse wave and they have like the, uh, if they, yeah, if he's not in the pulse wave and they're equipped, then yeah, it can kick off no matter who. It's pretty bad. Very annoying. It's very, it's very really annoying. tough, man. Did he have anything like locking in a roll on that? Like he wasn't doing the no, no, no he just dude. He luck. had double A sixty chases. He had Inquisitor and Killmonger out pretty much like the entire yeah, it's, time. Yeah, it's tough defense. So it's like show, I've got you know reduced pen, protected mastermind. Also, if you're equipped, I get a roll out, and I also have fifty fifty senses <laughs> and my own impervious. So like, you look at that and you're just like. Uh, I don't even want to attack anybody yeah. on your team. It was a brutal team, really cool team. But yeah, Spider-Man Prime, uh, I mean, it might be a local thing, but if you don't believe that guy's the real deal, then I, I would consider taking a look at him. Yeah. And for all you out there, I will buy him from you for $40. Anybody that wants a Spider-Man Prime will sell him to me. I'll buy them all for, for $40. I know that seems really low, but I'm doing a service to the community by doing this. So just no questions asked, 40 bucks. No it's, questions it's mine. asked. <laughs> all right. But yeah, so then I lost that top eight game and I was out in top eight. And that's fine. Yeah. I felt okay with that. I felt like I we both tried placed, better. You know? Yeah, we both placed. Had a good time. We do know. have to cover a quick side arc, though, here for competitive. So Luke... Uh, he hasn't played in a minute, so usually when he uh, is looking to play in a tournament, he'll come over. I'll get him up to speed on things, you know, as best as we can in like a day, and then he'll go play in states, which is exactly what we did. I still had to practice my scarab team a bit though, because I needed to work on the positioning for it. And so Luke played against my scarab team three times. Oh yeah, whooped him three times. You know, and it's a brutal team. And he's like, yeah, I just have no clue what to do against it. So at the tournament, we're both 2-0. and I play against Luke for the third match. Same thing, just whoop him. Fourth match, he plays against Tristan, who's playing the exact same Aww. team as me. He whoops him. And then he goes into top cut. The sixth game that Luke has played this exact build, he finally pulls out the win. That makes is, it that to top awesome. four. With Prime Spider-Man, making three of the top four builds Prime Spider-Man teams. What was the, th what was the last build? Last was one was it? Animals. Was oh, that's right. I really, you know, the more I look at Animals, the more I'm just They're like, an incredible answer. That really is an insanely good answer. I hate playing against it, though, because it's not, it's not the fact that I think it's, like, overpowered or anything. It's a very good team. Like, it's yeah. very solid. But I just hate how much... Okay, I'm going to sidestep carry everybody. I'm going to sidestep carry everybody. I'm going to move carry everybody. I'm going to drop this autonomous bystander. I'm going to drop that autonomous bystander. I'm going to drop this bystander. Like, it takes 10 actions. And yeah. it's just like, oh, it's, my gosh. It's it is egregious. Lot. But, you know, more power to you if you play it. But really, I mean, the more <laughs> I look at animals, uh, not to get, like, two sidetracked, I'm just like, that is just... Really, it's very it's similar really to solid. Well, it's like it's very similar to my team, but just honestly better. And like, and I, I hate to say that because there's no character on the animal team that I like besides Chip, so I would never play it in a million years. But like Cosmo shutting off powers, yeah, is that's so like so good. good. That's insanely good, you Lockjaw know. Giving Lockjaw giving dial, yeah, letting you be able to mastermind is so huge. It's Maggot crazy. has way too long of a dial with prob and super senses. Like, yeah. okay, bug boy, yeah, bro, where do you get that from? <laughs> yeah. How is that comic accurate in a million years? You're just gross, dude. <laughs> like so like all this stuff is just like they're not figures I like at all but they're great you know they work I, feel, I well. like Kazar a lot too yeah he's pretty cool he's not really he's seen a cool. ton but the uh, the highlight figure that I want everybody at home to check out 100% I played him on a Scarab build he does not need to be on a Scarab build but seriously take a look at Avengers 60th Spider-Man at 25 yeah he is so easy to activate and what I mean by that is just deal a click of damage to him all of a sudden, he's a charge flurry piece who can hand out, like, four action tokens. He has a wit. He's got wild card, 50-50 senses. He's a flyer. 
He's handing out TAs. Like, the guy is a menace, and I just don't think anyone is, like, really playing him. He is so freaking good. Like, I had a ton of fun playing him today. He was my not necessarily standout piece if I had to pick that. World's Finest dealing, like, 15 damage most turns. That's stupid. But Spider-Man was, uh, when he was good, which uh, probably, like, three out of the five games today, he was amazing. So, oh, sure. seriously, look at utilizing his trait. Look at playing him. I had so much fun with him. I think uh, I think he's a slept-on piece, so give him a second look if you oh, can. There you go. Yeah. Even just uh, giving, like, Spider-Man TA to friendly, like, Avengers is pretty huge. Yeah, it is Dude, really it's cool. so good. If they already have Super Senses, I mean... You play with Miles, I don't think cool. it's competitive Sack that you can play him with Miles. Yeah, and, like, probably not. They, they, they all Miles, have yeah. Super Senses plus Spider-Man 50, TA. 50, 50 cents, yeah. yeah. Sackman just getting stealth from Batman or see through stealth from Superman. Like, World's Finest and Spider Man is such a strong combo. And then, yeah, like, pretty much the Carrion Iron Man was either stealth turn one if they had range, or I'd get the six super senses, which I actually hit one game. And let me tell you, yeah. you want to deflate your opponent, you hit a six on a six that, senses. That on Sakarian, who you already need to remove actions oh, from. Oh. And they're just like, all right. Like, that's a I nail in this. the coffin. Yeah. And all I had to do was play a figure that's already good. <laughs> so, yeah, check him out. He's awesome. What about you, Calder? Any sleeper picks on your build? Sleeper picks? I mean, I, I'll, I mean, I'll preach Legacy Captain America until the cows come home. Like, <laughs> I, like you, at the beginning of the day, you were like, just get rid of him. Why is he on their team? But I, I love him so much. I love him as, like, a 50-point answer. Well, you were to, talking like, so about things. adding Sack, man. I was like, bro, he's literally 50 points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, we got rid of, you know, Molly and whatever. He surprised Geo. me, though. Yeah, so, I mean, he's just a piece where I think, not necessarily him specifically, but if there's ever a figure out there, guys, you think, oh, they, they can be, like, kind of competitive. Like, I think they have, like, he he has literally free make an attack. That, that's just yeah, good. that's always you good. You know, that's just always good. Across the map, wherever in the universe, you can go, no, nah, free make an attack. You know, and he can make his stats whatever you want them to be, really. So, I think just, if there's ever a piece where it's like, oh, this is my favorite character, but I don't think they're, like, 100% competitive, almost every game I play, and every game I do play with him, people go, I have no idea what this piece does. You know, no one ever and sees that's him. an advantage in itself. It, kind, it really kind of is, in a way. So, I would just say, not necessarily him specifically, but a character that you like, or a piece that you enjoy, that you think maybe doesn't quite cut it, build around with him, mess around with him. Like, the teams that I've put him on have, like, really evolved and changed over the course of these last few months to where i really like playing him and it catches people off guard and really so much of competitive is like i don't look at 90 percent of the cards anymore when i first started playing it was like oh yep give me your cards let me look at them see what you can do but now it's like we played against everything from wonder woman a million times where yeah. like, i don't need to look at sky tyrant or scarab or like any yep. of this stuff you know like people just they know i don't need to look at death metal wonder woman anymore like i know what's gonna happen like all this stuff but some of these figures these competitive guys they don't look at they don't care anymore because they write them off right away like uh let me see oh no he's got a 16 fd i'm not gonna play him you know and like that's yeah. that's all the thought that goes into it dies and then, to a cyclops call him. yeah that yeah he dies to cyclops for six. Don't, don't pay attention to it. <laughs> you know and <laughs> and so yeah i'm saying you know if if you want to play a character that you enjoy at a state level or even higher you know play them mess around yeah, with do them, it practice like 100 percent. it can absolutely work and you know I have I have two Does well. on figures. Yeah, let's yeah. hear them. I wasn't at states, but uh, because we've been doing an article series, which you should check Ooh, out, ah. it's the HeroClix uh, press room. You can see our weekly article series and team builds. Uh, we've each been doing different team builds, but I've been really getting into Pulp. I think Pulp's a lot of fun and really yeah. opens stuff up. Um, so one of my slept on figures, and I haven't done. I haven't added this to a team yet because I think most of the ones I've done are kind of just like obvious ones. But the Red Widow, uh, who is okay. like Charge Flurry, yeah. she's 45 Scott points, Crampton Charge Flurry. just won an event yeah. with her, yeah. I've, I've seen it on a few different builds, and it's just a super economical piece. It's not like breaking into any other meta other than Pulp, yeah. but in that specific kind of scene, it just does so much for so few points. For it's sure. got a decent long dial, it does pen Big damage. attack, dude, 12. 12 attack, yeah. yeah. So she can you can really just, as like an economical, send this across the board do some like big attacks and if they don't take her out right away she's just a constant threat uh and then my second one this is for like from the theme that i did recently um that is it how yeah the house of x magneto the like 25 point line where you can have the team up i i read that team up when it first came out and i was like yeah this is the best out of the set but then i, I sold that card it. for 60 dollars yeah. oh my gosh 
So he teams up with <laughs> Professor X, Apocalypse, and then Apocalypse is like Krakoan name. So it's like you can oh. double down on Apocalypse if you want. Uh, but if he has uh, one or more, so it'd be like Magneto and one more, they can use prob control, which is huge. Yeah. Because really the team probs aren't gone. So just getting like two or three people that all of a sudden can prob for no reason yeah. is big. And then if there's uh, two or more with like the listed names, so if it's him, Professor X, and an Apocalypse, then yeah, suddenly that, that A or whatever, yeah, <laughs> yeah the, all the uh, weird symbols, yeah. You can um, within it's like within three squares of Magneto, you can shut down Barrier, Mastermind, I think Willpower, In-cap. yeah, like all these di- mind control, maybe like there's all these powers that they just like shut off. Oh, Prob's one of them. Yeah, Prob. Oh, one dang. Of them. Within Jeez. three of them. So not only Pretty do you solid. have all these uses of Prob, so like. I was looking at that and I was like, so I could just put like, so this is silver. I could just put Dark Phoenix in my back line, have like two shield people because, uh, what's her name? Uh, Dazzler gives out oh, yeah. two people, like the shield team ability or X Men, but obviously I'm going with shield because it's an X Men team. So Dark Phoenix is 12 range, and then Ooh. I can bump her damage up by two, and then I can just taxi everyone across with either like venom mags or the weird guitar lady that was an le or like yeah, oh, guitar lila. Lady. yeah lila yeah <laughs> whatever her name was i can <laughs> i can taxi them across and if venom or if not venom magneto but if the uh house of x magneto with that team up card is within three it just really wrecks stuff on their team okay and it takes them like magneto is not easy to or he's not hard to KO. He's actually... But you still have to deal with him. And I have three props to their literally... Ah, Jeez, that's that's so insane, though. And then if they do just attack him right off the bat, I have Dark Phoenix from, like, across the board. Like, they're not able to, like, you know, go across the board because I'm shutting down so much stuff. Oh, yeah. If they ignore that squad and go after Dark Phoenix. So, yeah, yeah. that that Magneto, I definitely slept on him. I... I think I looked at him because he was like a retail piece, like a single base retail piece, which I thought was cool. Right. I still like the two by two uh, X Men Dark Phoenix saga. I love that Magneto. one. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. awesome. That one's just as cool, but this one, this one does a lot of the same stuff. Um, but then, yeah, that that Red Widow, I'm seeing it on a lot of builds. Yeah, it's been played I, a lot. Yeah, that's a figure that I just absolutely did not look at, and obviously, I didn't know about Pulp when that figure came out. Right. Yeah, so, it wasn't a thing yet. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, speaking on Magneto's and Pulp, the uh, X of Swords rare who has improved targeting characters, running shot, force blast, psychic blast. Mm, yeah, um, can use force blast as free after he hits you, and you know it's like it's penetrating damage from the psychic blast. Has enhancement as well. He can carry people. He's only like sixty-five points. I think he might be a slept-on Pulp figure. I know I'm going to try and build with that just because I like Magneto and I specifically like that figure of him. But I think he's really solid. He's yeah. a really good attacker, and being able to shoot through people, that's always nice because it's like, all right, I'm going to throw this guy in front of me. So yeah. Yeah. another slept on Magneto for you. <laughs> I have no slept on Magneto. Sorry, guys. I don't know. Magneto I don't know. I don't know him that much. Uncommon from <laughs> X-Men Rise of... Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there are a, there's a ton of good ones. You hear about this Magneto? He's like uh, the Venom symbiote, and then he's also Magneto. I don't think he has played Let's that talk much. about that for a second. Yeah. Venom Magneto... All of his special abilities, just go and read his card. It's literally just symbiotic magnetic field, symbiotic leadership, <laughs> symbiotic I'm Magneto. <laughs> like, I'm Magneto, but symbiotic. I'm the best version of Magneto, symbiotic. It's, Beautiful, it's incredible upsetting. flavor text. It's, uh, it makes me sad that that's the best Magneto, because what does that... Answer, answer this, listeners. What does the, mag- or the Venom symbiote actually do for Magneto? Should just be like senses. Senses, really. Basically. Senses, shape change, plus He already right? flies. Like, he doesn't need to stick to walls, but he no. could. Symbiotic super senses? Yeah. Ooh. Symbiotic <laughs> senses. Uh, no, there's. Yeah. That it really doesn't add. Too Unlike, much. though, I will say, like, yeah, what does it do for him? But, like, what is it doing on Phoenix? That's always, like, the worst one. Burning. Like, it doesn't like yeah. fire. Yeah. It's like, burning. why is it on Phoenix? There's actually, like, a. I don't remember the storyline. What specifically? I think it's like one of the random Spider Verse esque things. But a symbiote like attaches to the thing. They get it off the thing, and then it attaches to Johnny because he's using uh, some sort of image inducer. And apparently, the symbiote can't sense that it's not Peter Parker, so it like attaches to Johnny. And then he's like, "Flame on!" And I was like, "Yeah." Huh. So uh, 
Interesting. So it is a bad idea for the symbiote to attach to... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe when it attaches to Phoenix... Well, first, it's cosmic fire, so that's different. Oh. Yeah, it's oh, different than Johnny oh, fire. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, but second, maybe it's uh, like consensual fire. I don't know. Is that, <laughs> is that a thing? Like, if the symbiote agrees to being lit on fire, then it's yeah. totally I'm going to need fine. you to sign these documents really quick before we go any further. If you guys, If you guys could pick any figure to bring into Heroclix as a Venom... Okay. Figure, <laughs> who are you taking? Oh, not easily. a listener question. This is a, oh, this a is table a question. question oh, here. This is man. on the fly. Easily uh, from the old man Logan storyline, the oh, Venom T Rex. The T Rex, yeah. that's super fair. Just I'm 100 with you there. One, that'd be sweet to get a T Rex in the like, game. Like that's not Devil Dino. Yeah. But then also like that's probably one of the coolest scenes in that storyline where they're it, it was it's like sick. a chase scene. It's literally. Jurassic Park. We're in like this weird. They're in like the spider. No, they're the spider buggy, oh, aren't right. they? Yeah. yeah, they're in the spider buggy. <laughs> that's been made. Like, come on, yeah. dude. They didn't get spider buggy. The future keyword when it came out. I was so mad. <laughs> I can't play it. No. Yeah. So yeah, yours okay, is the T Rex. I lo- honestly, I, I was expecting answers I'd really hate. I like that. <laughs> that's really cool. I want Venom Howard the Duck from ooh, Marvel ooh. Contest of Champions. Yeah, yeah it's like, okay. He's his like, it's his Venom. mech suit, and like, yeah, yeah, he'll like fly out of it. For, yeah. So it's so creepy. It like shoots eggs somehow, even though Howard's definitely not laying those. Yeah, <laughs> it's super weird. But yeah, Venom Howard the Duck is like really funny. I can get behind yeah. that. What about, I doubt this has ever happened. I'd be happily proven wrong. A Venom Modoc? Oh my ooh. gosh. With a big tongue, like, big you know, hang <laughs> Like yeah. It's oh wait, there's the head. Deadpool Modok. That's kind of similar. Yeah. Pool, yeah. Um, or not? That's not Deadpool. It is. It's de- is it just D E A D? Yeah. It's Deadpool, but the periods, periods. in between. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Headpool is the actual. Head it's just the, like the zombie head, zombie, with the little yeah. Uh, yeah, the propeller. <laughs> I could <laughs> see hilarious. that. Like, okay, I would like pack, Venom Modok. That'd be kind of cool. Funny. It's just a head. That's Maybe it's like crawling around like Doc Ock with like weird little tentacle things. Obviously, we need Venomized Thug. Venomized Thug, be, yeah. That needs to be the next, yeah. A Venom Doctor Octopus, that would be another character that gain? just doesn't yeah, need it. Yeah, like nothing. <laughs> he has tentacles. If and now get, he has tendrils. If we get, tendrils, <laughs> tendrils. If we get uh, Black Lantern Goon, we should get Venom Goon. Dude, yeah. Black Lantern. 100%. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Goon's definitely my favorite sculpt <laughs> they've previewed, where he's... He looks like he's surfing, but he's just, he like, squatting funny, funnily. Yeah. He's just, like... Aha, uh-huh. Batman won't see me if I'm just mm. lower to the I ground. I mean, I was flattered He's to have my likeness sneaking used around. for a hero click <laughs> sculpt. I was flattered. If Goon stood all the way up, you wouldn't want it. You'd be terrified. You'd be like, oh, this dude's huge. Based Slender off Man. Of, uh, yeah. Based off of the movie, Goon, he should be pretty good at close combat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe have some, like, improved movement stuff. Uh, Jeez. I'm hoping for a lot of generators in Notorious. I'm hoping for a lot of people who I hope can we get bring Generator in. X 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. that's what I yeah, meant. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't they, so like in the Design Insight article, they were talking about like the different ways they had to design that stuff. To make the goons. Yeah. And, uh, they yeah, had mentioned it. They, yeah, they talked about how like, they have to be kind of like generatable. Like you can bring them in in some fashion or whatever. Uh, how they still have to be economic, but then like also like an interesting dial that you want multiples of kind of thing. So I yeah I love when you can make stuff I you know bystander generators are my favorite because they don't cost any points. oh dude they're oh, the yeah. best but yeah also bringing in like the pulse waving hydra dudes is super fun like, yeah if I suddenly just get like a nice roll and then you have to worry about this dinky little dude with pulse wave <laughs> for no reason you're just like uh like surprisingly like Sakarian Iron Man is now scared of simple hydra agent. <laughs> I do. I do love that. I know, like, the Iconics Batman, we saw his card. Like, getting a Batman that generates bystanders, that's just, like, a dream come true. That is pretty awesome. Because that's... Bystander generation's easily my favorite mechanic, so if we can hopefully get some, you know, iconic Batman villains who can make these uh, Batman... Like, or not really Batman, but, like, the generics, like, the generic goons that would be hired by them, I will be playing... That'll be so, so much fun. Yeah. I I don't know, I got big hopes for Notorious. I'm interested to see if it's anywhere near Batman team up. Yeah. It'll be amazing. Yeah. 
I want to really quickly shout out a listener that sent in their team oh, this yeah. last week. Uh, Camden here uh, sent in a team, and we were able to get back. I should really should say Ian was able to get back to him about some changes he'd make to the team, some some bits and bobs there. And the update was he ended up going second place at the North Carolina States with a crazy 32 people showed up. Yeah. Uh, and he said he was able to make it to the finals, but ended up losing 190 to 195 Heart in the closest break. game ever. Oh. That's insane. So really five points away from being a tire, you know, six points away from being state champion. That's incredible from like beating it out of 32 people. Yeah, big that, turnout. That has to be one of the biggest states we've seen so far, right? That's, like, yeah, I think so. Like, because I even think Washington had what 25, 27, I like just a little yeah, more than Nebraska. Seen, like, 28, 29, but. Yeah, I think 30. I don't think I've seen too many pop past 30, so that's got to be the top to my recollection. Right. Man, losing by five points, that's not even an that's, equipment. That's I mean, a cloak attack. Equipment. Yeah. yeah. That, that's a, a cloak. cloak attack, that's man. It's just a bit. It's, yeah. Yeah, he had sent in a, an animal build that, um, you know, no offense, was a little antiquated because it had the Empire Chase Beast on it, who is great for, like, stripping powers, but when you have Cosmo, who is 30 points less than him, who can also do the same thing with a power yeah. action. It's just a, you know, it's just you play Cosmo over him, and then that allows you to fit on another Lockjaw, possibly another Maggot if you have more points elsewhere, uh, another Chip if you want that. Like, you, it just opens up so many options. So, yeah, I had replied to him saying, like, hey, here's some tips. Uh, a really cool tip if you're planning on playing um, animals is to position your Lockjaws behind your team. And the reason you want to do that is because if your opponent has a pulse wave and some knockback to go with it, which is a very common thing, or energy uh, energy explosion knockback, if you put multi-base characters behind your team, uh, when they go to knock you back, you can't knock back a multi-base character, so Ooh. you can keep your formation intact. Another really cool trick that you can do with animals, um, this is another piece of advice I gave him, is teams now, more than ever, like to be clumped together. It's always something that you want in hero clicks. You know, you want your synergizing pieces next to each other. But right now, it's, I think, more prominent than ever. With your massive movement with, like, cloak on uh, lockjaw and then another sidestep from chip, you're placing so much. You can drop a boot behind them, kick them out uh, with the free action from it, right? Now you can separate them from the team and just murder them. Oh, yeah. So using knockback to your advantage there. And then the other like tip that I absolutely love, not a lot of people do it. You don't see it on a lot of builds. I believe it was on his. I'd have to double check. Giving the lasso of truth to Lockjaw. It gives him a free in cap, and Lockjaw has a trait where if he misses an attack, which he has an eight attack top yeah, dial, nine attack. Uh, if he misses an attack, they get a mobile. So if you hit, they take an action token. If he misses, they gain a mobile. You sidestep away. They're stuck doing nothing. Good. So I love that combo. I think Golden Armor is really good on him, too, because you can give him invulnerability. So okay. now instead of toughness, because you don't want to waste out wits on Lockjaw. No. no. Just makes him that much more of a sponge. But, you know, I think there's a lot of cool stuff. So congratulations, Camden. That's yeah. awesome that you got second. And uh, hopefully those tips were helpful. If you have a build, if you have a states coming up, send us an email. I'm more than happy to uh, give you some feedback, some tips, if I've played it at all. Uh, if not... I'll give you my best guess. <laughs> but yeah, so that's been a ton of fun. And I think that's kind of a wrap on our state's tournaments so far. We're kind of up in the air. We may be going to Iowa here potentially. Ooh. I kind of want to, honestly. I do too. Yeah. It's been a while since I've been to Jay's Hobby CD, <laughs> whatever. I, I can't remember what it's called. I think just Jay's CD and Hobby, something like yeah, that. Something there's like, like that. three in Iowa. So I don't know which one. Or There's like three in Des Moines. In Des Moines. Uh, it's been at two different ones. It has? Oh, jeez. So, to yeah, there's figure the out where we got to uh, go. The one in the little strip mall. Yep. And then I think at like one random year. I don't know if it was a States or like just a WKO. It was at the one that like I had never been to before. Hmm. And so I showed up at the wrong one. Oh, no. Like, but it was like an hour. Yeah, early, so you're good. I was just like looked around and I was like, huh, not this one. And then... <laughs> I went to the next one, and it happened to be that one. Uh, but Des Moines is great. It's got, you know, Zombie Burger. It's got, uh, Ooh. gosh, what's the Northern Lights Pizza? Where they okay, just, I haven't been like any of these just, places. It's uh, just breadsticks, like, floating in garlic butter sauce. Ooh. Delicious. Floating? Yeah, it's like <laughs> a lot soup. Of, a lot of butter. But the broth is garlic there. butter. 
and the bits of the soup are breadsticks. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Just poke a straw in there, you're good to uh, go. <laughs> and if you want to poke a straw, no, uh, you can't. <laughs> can't do that. To Why? Uh, all right. If you're if you were looking to pick up some of the figures that we said were hidden gems ooh ah or if you're looking to build some states teams you just want to collect whatever it may be you should check out coolstuffinc.com where they've got the latest hero clicks singles and sealed products they'll have notorious going up on pre-order pretty soon and use code dial5 to save 5% off when you do and if you're looking to pick up hero clicks Directly from the source, WizKids, you can go to their website at shop.wizkids.com and use code DIALH10 to save 10% off your order. It is not applicable for Iconics or Play at Home kits, just as a reminder. But Notorious should be available soon for pre order, so check that out. Make sure you're following Dial H on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and all of those socials. If you want to send us an email, it's Dial H for HeroClux at gmail.com. If you want to write us a review, please do so on Podbean iTunes. We appreciate it. And like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred instant deadpan humor. Over okay, six yeah. people think I am funny. I'm your